Viruses use proteins in various ways to infect and hack our cells to reproduce themselves. This is very much what SARS-CoV-2 is doing right now. These are highly complex structures and they are too small for us to observe them in action. But can we use computers to simulate their interactions in order to help speed up the search for vaccines or other drug therapies? Wait, hold up. What exactly are viruses? A virus is an entity that infects the living cells of an organism and can only replicate inside of those cells. Viruses can infect all life forms, including animals, plants, and microorganisms such as bacteria. They are found wherever there is life and have probably existed since living cells first evolved, so they have been around a long time. They have been an important means of gene transfer in evolution, thereby increasing genetic diversity. About 5,000 virus species are known out of the millions of types that exist. They are the most numerous and diverse type of biological entity on Earth and are found in almost every known ecosystem. There's an ongoing debate as to whether they are truly alive or not. Some biologists think they are alive because they carry genetic material, evolve through natural selection, and reproduce. On the other hand, they lack key characteristics of life, such as cellular structure and the ability to replicate on their own. Some deem them to be organisms at the edge of life. The host range is the variety of host cells that a particular virus can infect. This ranges from narrow to broad as some viruses can't infect certain species, while some can infect many. Okay, so what about proteins? Are they part of viruses? A viral protein is actually both a component and a product of a virus. Viral proteins come in several flavors, including structural, non-structural, regulatory, and accessory. Medical science usually looks at the structural type. Most viral structural proteins are parts that make up the capsid and envelope of the virus. The viral DNA, or RNA, encodes the instructions needed to replicate the virus. The capsid acts like a shield that protects those instructions. It is also the part that attaches a virion, a virus outside a host, to a cell and allows it to penetrate the cellular membrane. Viruses basically break into a cell and use its machinery to make its own proteins. How rude and sneaky. So the viral proteins are really the key to us understanding more about viruses and how to diffuse them. The function of a protein is determined by its shape, a three-dimensional structure formed through a complex process called protein folding, where it essentially builds itself. Since they are too small to be seen in action, one promising way for us to understand complex proteins in various states with other molecules is through computer simulations. But wait, there's another problem. These simulations can be so complex that the computing power required is enormous and even beyond that of supercomputers. Enter Rosetta at Home. Rosetta at Home is a distributed computer network that uses the power of many computers around the world. An individual computer runs a part of the simulation while it's idle and then sends the data back. You can just chill while your computer is doing the work. With the recent COVID-19 outbreak and crisis, Rosetta at Home has been used to predict the structure of proteins central to this virus, as well as to test new mini-proteins to be used as potential therapeutics and diagnostics. Rosetta was recently used to predict the structure of a coronavirus protein before it could be measured in a lab. By offering scientists a glimpse of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, Rosetta provided a boost to efforts to develop drugs and vaccines against the virus. This protein is how the virus fuses its membranes with our cellular membranes in order to infect our cells. Rosetta calculated the 3D structure of this spike protein in early February 2020. The prediction closely matched what was found later in the lab. Home users' computers, like yours, were likely used in this calculation. Using this structure, researchers have begun designing proteins that would stick to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, preventing the virus from infecting cells. Work is now underway to produce these antiviral proteins, test how well they bind to the spike protein, 
and evaluate their efficacy as coronavirus drugs. So will you and your computer help save the world from COVID-19 and other threatening viruses? Follow the links below the video to get started. Like, follow, subscribe, and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help save the world.